If you're a saved person, a follower of Jesus Christ, then don't be materialistic. We live in a culture in which we're constantly urged to purchase things. Some things we need for survival, food, clothing, shelter. Other things are completely discretionary. Even when it comes to the necessities of life, we're told we shouldn't settle for merely surviving, but that we should treat ourselves to much more than that. We're told that we deserve good things. We work hard, we're good people, others have nice things, why shouldn't we? Of course, these messages are just used to get us to purchase one company's product over another, or to get us to spend more than we plan to or need to. For companies, it's all about money. For individuals, it's all about us. What do we want? What do we deserve? We're told that the accumulation of possessions will enhance our lives, make us happy, take away our problems, make us more desirable, let other people know how successful we are. These messages stroke our ego, and before long, we actually do believe that we deserve all these things. For generations now, children have been told how special they are just because they are. People have grown up expecting to get the things they want. Our culture has successfully created generations of self-absorbed, materialistic, prideful consumers. This materialistic culture has become so ingrained in American society that our economy literally can't survive without people believing these things. Fully 70% of the American economy is based on consumer spending. Americans have an almost non-existent savings rate. They have tremendous personal debt. People have leveraged their credit cards and even their homes in order to have this lifestyle that they're continually told they deserve and is to be expected. Even people with more money than they could spend in their lifetimes commit crimes in order to get even more money, in order to buy more stuff. Few people have a desire to live within their means. God tells us in Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 that covetousness, wanting to have more, is idolatry. These things become the things we live for, we work for, we spend our time thinking about and chasing after. We can see the workings of the devil in this mindset. The pride that makes us think we deserve these things and the elevation of these things to positions of prominence in our lives. Idols that are the focus of our attention and desire. This may sound like an exaggeration, but look at the long hours people spend at work away from their families in order to make more money or to get a promotion so they can make more money. And the justification that is often heard is, I just want my children to have nice things. What people's children need are parents, parents to raise them and give them the proper priorities for their lives. If the children can't get their parents' time, they'll accept their parents' gifts until that's all they ever want or expect from them. All of this ignores one simple fact. The money isn't ours. The money is God's. God gives us the ability to do our jobs. God provides us with our jobs. God's blessed people in many Western countries with economy in which there are lots of jobs. The blessings of being born in the right place at the right time. These things don't happen by accident. God provides all that we need. We are to be good stewards of the money, the time, the talents that God provides for us. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30, in the parable of the talents, to make sure we're putting to good use the things God has put us in charge of. If we use God's money to buy unnecessary or extravagant things for ourselves, then who's our focus on? Who's our priority? ourselves or God. As saved people, our lives should be devoted to God. All that we do should glorify Him. Yes, we have to work to pay rent, to buy food and clothing. This is the means by which God provides these things for many people. 
However, when our work becomes the means of self-indulgence, then our focus is in the wrong place. God's provision is being used not for God's work and His glory, but for our pleasure. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 8, God tells us through Paul that if we have food and clothing, we should be content. Many of us have much more than that. We have shelter, we have transportation, we have other things that make our lives less difficult. We should give praise to God for these additional blessings. Short of being naked and starving, we should be content with what God's given us. As saved people, how can we use what God's given us to serve Him? Well, one can purchase Bibles to hand out to people so that they can find out about salvation through Jesus. One can support the work of missionaries. God tells us in James chapter 1, verse 27 that true religion is to visit the fatherless and help widows and to keep oneself unstained by the world. God's priorities are different than those of the world. God wants us to spend our time and our money serving Him and His people and not just on things for ourselves. Yes, people need certain things to survive in this world, and God has graciously provided those things beyond what one could expect. But there's a difference, for example, between buying clothes that will cover you and buying expensive designer clothes so that you can look cool and trendy. Having a car to get to work is a useful gift that God provides many people. But there's a difference between an affordable, reliable car and a $60,000 German sports sedan. God kindly provides homes for many people. But there's a difference between a house for your family and a massive home that does more to display one's status than to provide shelter. There's a difference between the things we need and the things we want. And what's the point of all these extra things anyway? Jesus warns people in Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 21, in the parable of the rich fool, that they can spend their lives collecting things and lose their souls because they were not focused on God. Their priority is their own pleasure and satisfaction, and they've neglected serving God with the things He's provided for them. Jesus gives us a warning in this parable, in verse 15, where He says, Beware! Keep yourselves from covetousness, for a man's life doesn't consist of the abundance of the things which he possesses. Jesus goes on to tell us in the verses that follow, verses 22 to 34, that God knows what we need to survive, that we shouldn't be anxious for our lives. We should trust that God will provide for us, and that we should spend the time and resources that He's given us to store up treasures in heaven. In the end, the things we store up on the earth will fade away, they'll wear out, they'll break. At some point, we will leave this life also. Then all the things that we've chased after will do us no good. And for those that have made these things the focus of their lives, that spent their time trying to obtain these things rather than spending their time worshiping and serving God, for those who have made an idol out of these things that the world values, what will they have that will count in eternity? Thankfully, as saved people, we have God's Spirit inside of us so that our priorities are not those of the world's. We have God to turn to when the world tempts us with these things that have no value in eternity. God gives us the understanding and the humility to realize that all we have comes from Him and that serving Him gives us our greatest satisfaction. He gives us the patience not to settle for the tarnished treasures of this fallen world, but to wait for our treasures stored up in heaven. How will we spend the time, the money, the talents that God's given us? Will we collect things for our own pleasure and status and pride? Or will we use what God's given us for His glory to do His will? Who's more important in our lives, us or God? What's more important in our lives, the things of the world or the things of God? Which will bring us everlasting joy, 
the fading possessions of this world or the sweet words of our Savior Jesus when he says to us, well done, good and faithful servant.